Bears at Dolphins Thursday night NFL market. What should Bears be looking at? Two factors in this game. Both of them go against the Chicago Bears. You've got motivation on the Miami side. We'll talk about that concerning the injuries. And scheduling is a horrible spot for the Bears. Coming off a big division game against uh, Minnesota last week in which they won. Have to travel on a Thursday night, short week, on the road, non-division game, which generally is the least important on your schedule. Both of those factors go against the Bears, and I'll explain why I'm going to back All Miami. right, so let's start by explaining to me why Miami is high motivation here. I like to use, this is going to come into the injured player theory. They're going to rally around the third-string quarterback, which actually, when they got to him last week, he did play well and got them the win. They started the game with uh, Chad Pennington. They benched Chad Henney. Pennington got hurt early. They had to go back to Chad Henney, who got hurt himself, and then were forced to go to the third-string quarterback, Tyler Thigpen. Anytime you have a bad situation like that, I believe, and we will get into our debate on intensity, but the rest of the team plays at a different level because of the injured star. And here they're going to rally around that third-string quarterback. Everybody will give an extra effort. And it's human nature. If you're the Chicago Bears, you got to look at it and think, i got a little bit of a break here. We're going against the third-string quarterback. Okay, so, so you make a good point. And I agree. Your injury, that's one of your pet theories. I agree with it a vast majority of the time is the team is going to make the effort to rally around and, and pick up the slack. And the opponent is inclined to let off the gas just a little bit and not put as much effort in and focus. And the betters themselves who set the market are most are, are really affected by marquee injuries like the quarterback. They're thinking third string quarterback. That's all they're thinking, which means there's going to be a premium on Chicago. All right, so I agree with all that. Let's talk about Chicago. So that's pro Miami. Let's talk, and not necessarily that Miami's the better team because their third-string quarterback's in. It's in this situation, considering the point spread, they're going to be the better. They're going to relatively be the better bet. Right. All right. Why Chicago at a disadvantage? Chicago's at a disadvantage because one, they're coming off a big game last week. They played Minnesota, and if you break that game down once again, and the Bears have done this several times this year, the Bears, for the record they have. I don't think they're as good as their record indicates. I've watched a lot of Bear games this year, and they just keep getting the breaks to stay in ball games. Last week, four more turnovers by the Vikings was the difference in that ball game, helped Chicago win. The other thing that I like here, it's the preparation time. This is tough to turn around in the NFL from a Sunday to a Thursday game. And what makes when it, you're traveling. When you're traveling and when you're playing a team that you don't play every year. It's a little bit easier if you're playing a team on a short week that you play twice a year. But in Miami's on the same short week. The only difference is the travel. The, the only difference Which is, is a big difference because if you only have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the, the half a day for travel is a, a significant percentage of the preparation time. It is. And let's throw another wrinkle in here where the injury actually is a benefit to Miami. You've got a short week of preparation. Tyler Thinkpen, there's not a lot of film on him. He's the third string quarterback. So now you don't got a lot to look at. You don't know what to expect and what his tendencies are either of how you're going to game plan to beat somebody that there's not a lot of film on. Well, there could be another side to it is if you're not going to be able to game plan anyway, then the short period of time doesn't really <laughs> matter. Okay, so let me throw some numbers at you. One of my themes this week is going to be that side or no side where I think there's a few trends this week that are so big that I came into the handicap saying that side or no side. And actually, to me, though I hate Chicago and I would never bet them here, Miami is a go against to me in this spot, though I am passing the game. And it's the same thing I've now said. This is the third time I'll be saying it on the videos. They are 17 and 41 ATS at home. That's 29%. That's that's a massive number of games. You've got 58 games, 29%. They do not have the home field advantage that the normal NFL team does. I, if I told you that, that I've got a home team that's 29% over the last almost like eight years, hey, do you want to bet at 11 and 10? You probably, do, you know, your first thought is no. So sometimes there's trends so prominent that it's, to me, I'm either going to fade it or I'm going, or I'm going to pass it. Um, 
Now, how, and again, I know to some degree this isn't a best bet from you, so it's not like you love Miami, but uh, how do you look at a 30, 29% home team? Well, there's no question they've had problems, you know, and that number that you're quoting there goes back several years. I think this team is... Well, um, this team, I mean, don't, let's not step into any, uh, any problems here. I mean, they are breaking historic NFL records for winning on the road and losing at home. So it's not like all of a sudden they've turned this around. Well, but they did win last week, and that's a momentum builder. They did win at home against a team that was coming off a of bye week, had the new Randy Moss coming into town, you know, and everything in Tennessee. You know, in my, you know, regards, I look at Tennessee as a better team than the Chicago Bears. Oh, for, I agree with that 100%. Uh, my, Chicago doesn't do well against good teams. They've only covered 2 of 12 as an underdog. So they're the type of team, if they're supposed to win, you know, maybe they'll get the win, but they don't seem to do so well when they're in a real competitive spot. Um, Chicago, like you said, how much significance do you give to the fact that their win last week was against Minnesota? I mean, that's clearly a big interdivisional game. Absolutely. And I'll go back to earlier in the year, there was a similar setup, not a short week. Well, yeah, actually it was, but not as short. Chicago played on a Monday night against the Packers. Mm -hmm. They won that game, and it was, you know, again, typical fashion. Green Bay turned it over late, and they won it. Uh, it either was in overtime or right at the end of regulation by three. They went on the road the next week, Sunday night game, non-division game on the road to the Giants and got smoked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I'm not comparing the Giants in Miami, but just the situation was the same. And we're taping on Wednesday, left tackle long for Miami. Left tackles are key, especially stud left tackles. Is now probable? He is now probable, yes. Okay, uh, anything else before you give your formal projection? We've pretty much covered everything I got. I will point out that this Miami defense, last week we talked about Tennessee and the offensive weapons they have compared to what Chicago has. They held Tennessee to 259 yards total offense last week. Hit us. I got Miami 20 to 14. All right, now it's your turn to continue the conversation in the comment section with Mark on me. And next up, we'll be talking about the ESPN Thursday game. We've got UCLA at Washington.